It seems like I've known Marie Sendak for a very long time. And uh, although we're known for good things here at Martha Stewart, you're known for wild things. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> I'm afraid so. Uh, but I remember so clearly the publication the of this book. Doing the best book. book, yes. And this is a, a beautiful volume that Abrams published a long time ago, 1980, uh, one of the most beautiful books about the history, really, of the work that Maurice Sendak has done. Uh, he is probably the best-known living child's author. You're a legend in your own time, and it's very special well, to have you. certainly one of the oldest. You are? Oh, well. <laughs> it's all right. <laughs> Where I'm the here. Wild Things Are is one of the best-selling children's books ever, one of the top ten. Yeah, it's amazing. It is. Published in 63, came out to quite a lot of alarm. You know, it was considered a very strange well, book. Well, talk about that, because I think people are, would be much less shocked if it came out now. It was just the next book that I was going to do. And it was originally titled Where the Wild Horses Are, which I thought was extremely poetic. And my editor bought the book based on the title, because I had in the story. And then this dreadful news that I could not draw horses. I tried, and I tried, and I tried. Oh. Couldn't, couldn't. Oh. And then we tried a number of other things. And Ursula said, my editor, Ursula Nordstrom, uh, what can you draw? So things could be anything, right? Wild things. Wild things. And um, they evolved slowly. And it was only later I realized and admitted only years later that these were relatives. These were people who came to our house, who didn't speak English, who kissed me and my brother and my sister and hugged us and spoke in a funny way and had discolored teeth. And you know how inhospitable and cruel children are. Oh, yes. So we hated them. <laughs> we hated them. We only realized that you're supposed to love relatives later in life. And One thing about Maurice Sendak is that he is brutally honest. <laughs> Your books really were different from a lot of other children's books, but not so different from things that we had read. I mean, I had exactly. read Grimm's fairy tales. Yeah, and the old folk tales from the oh, old country. Yes. Stories my father told me were hair-raising and wonderful. Oh, yes. He never edited his stories, and I genetically am the same. I don't edit my stories. I don't think there is such a thing as actually a book for children, because what is that? Mm -hmm. You look down at kids, you condescend to them. But Wild Things was a new book, I think now in retrospect, because he yells at his mother. And his mother yells back, and food is taken away from him, and he's punished. All of that seemed very novel back in the early 60s. But normal to you. Well, wow, to everybody. <laughs> of course. To everybody. But you just didn't write about it, right? Nobody didn't write about it. I mean, nasty kids were not written about. Look at him, the, the little prince. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He's a cocky little fellow. Yes. He has to be. The interesting thing was the book scared people. It was because they were looking at the wild things. They said, this is too scary for children. This next book. Where In the is Night it? Kitchen. Now, this one. It was worse. Yeah, this was it much was worse. Because I did something I thought surely must have been already done, which was a frontal nudie of a little boy. It not had happened in an American children's book. So this book was banned. This book was trounced on. To me, again, it was just the most natural thing in the world that we all knew what we looked like. And we're rather pleased if we were lucky. Right. <laughs> you know, until we're told otherwise, we're pleased. What do you think about children and books and the importance of reading? Reading is sitting on your parents' lap. Reading is a physical act. A book should be beautiful. Every book that's manufactured should have textures and qualities and smells as though it were a toy, as though it were something precious. And then when you're read to by a parent, mom or pop, and you're sitting on a lap and the body is there, then you have the whole thing. You have the total organization of parent, child, and book fusion. That's something television or any other form cannot give a human being. You've been influenced by so many things, not only your family life, but also books you read. Yeah. So which ones? You, you, brought, you brought a few. Well, my very favorite was Mickey Mouse in Pygmy Land. Now, this is not the edition I had. That was thrown away because we moved so frequently. Like Orson Welles and Rosebud, it took me years to track this book down. But here's a first edition oh, of boy. Mickey Mouse in Pygmy Land, which, of course, is a takeoff on Gulliver's Travels. Yes. I still adore it. It has that cheap old pulp paper yeah. smell. Indeed. Yeah. Oh, yeah, real you musty. remember that smell? Oh, yes. Okay. Then a fancier book, my first proper book, was my sister, who was the oldest, bought me The Prince and the Pauper isn't by Mark a, Twain. Isn't that a yeah. beautiful story? Yeah. 
but I still have her copy that she gave me. And the first woodcut I ever made, that's the S that marks Sendak books. Um, maybe my favorite was Alice in Wonderland, which my cousin Laura lent me in 1967. She said you can only have it for seven days. But she didn't date it, She did didn't she? date it. So it's seven days, 60 years ago, okay? <laughs> Hard luck, Laura. Has she asked for it back ever? No, no. And, but I, I was apologetic. I drew all over it. Hideous drawing. I certainly did not have you parents. Have, you have evolved from there. <laughs> <laughs> My parents didn't have to go to school and say, I have a gifted child, what should I do with him? Oh, they didn't know, did they? I'm, how could you know from that? You can't. Terrible. This is, this is a pretty terrible drawing. <laughs> so when did you start really drawing and knowing that you um, could draw? It was soon after that, really. My family was a, a crafts family. My father told stories. My brother wrote stories. I illustrated my brother's stories. My sister lent the books out. We stitched them together. So we were in the business really from childhood. It was the only thing I could do, the only thing I wanted to do. I've illustrated over 90 books, but I've written only a dozen of them because writing is so tremendously difficult. Because when I do write a book, I want it to have some particular purpose. But you did write this. I did write that. And this is your favorite? My favorite of my books, yes. Uh, well, it's a favorite of ours, too, in I'm our glad. family. I'm oh, yes. glad. We've always loved this book. It got, again, into some difficulty because the heroine, Ida, is so fierce. And it was wondered whether girls are fierce. Strange, oh, they are. Strange question. I know lots of fierce yeah. girls. But, you know, we still have this odd thing about boys and girls. Anyway, that is my favorite because it's, it's the most personal of my books. And Ida is my sister, and I was the baby, and she had to take care of me. And if you're a baby and you have a sibling taking care of you, you know how close to death you always are. You know, with her rampages and her temper tantrums, and I have the scars to prove it. What are you writing now? I am working on a picture book that has to do with my siblings. Very difficult, but I am very patient. I always have been patient. It could take five to ten years to compose hmm. a picture book. I have a little children's theater called Night Kitchen, but the books are the basis of my life. I can't not do books. Well, we look forward with great anticipation and pleasure the next publication by Maurice Sendak. Thank you, Martha. And we made a present for you. No. We did. We made oh, you... my. Oh, no, not only the cake. I the cake. Oh, no, cake you will have every day. <laughs> but this is something else that you sort of wanted. Mama you were, Mia. You were kind enough to let us use Rosie on the Rosie O'Donnell show. And this is a decoupage. And we made you a decoupage hey. magnetic memory board. These are magnetized buttons, and you can keep little notes to yourself on here. That's gorgeous. <laughs> Thank you. So that's for you. What in, a day. In addition to the what cake. What a day. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Mark. Well, it's a day for us, too, and a great amount of pleasure. Thank you. Same here. Thank you very much. <laughs>